Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First off, as always, I want to thank you for stopping in. Second off, I want to commend you for stopping in because judging by the title, you can see this is a how-to video. So if you're stopping in for a how-to video, clearly you have some degree of interest in doing your own work, and I commend you for that one. Today is going to be wrapping the bumper that was down there. For those that have a Chevy in this kind of body style, I want to show you what pieces were in the bumper that I had to take out just to get to the actual bumper itself. Here, basically the structural integrity of the bumper. Fog lights come in there. This is my parking sensor, one, two. Big wiring harness. And then the other half of the structural integrity of the bumper. And then down here, we had our plastic valence that I have already trimmed, as you can see here, just kind of a rough deal. I knew from about like two weeks into having this truck, I wasn't gonna keep that bumper. So I've kind of been experimenting with my bumper at my expense for your viewing pleasure, I guess. I chopped it up to see how it would look. It wasn't too bad. And the other half would be the middle piece, which has a parking sensor, parking sensor, and held in by about 95 clips. These big bolts right here would held in the uh, two mounts right there. These little guys held in all the plastic pieces. These are some new tabs I've never seen on a GM vehicle till now. And the way they work is they'll slide into like this. You just kind of pop right in, and then you got to pull them out. The little tab will bite onto it. Honestly, it was kind of neat. I'm used to those little, the ones where you have to pop the pin out and then pull it out. You guys know what I'm talking about. Those are kind of a pain, but those weren't too bad, and I was kind of impressed by them. So anyways, let's get into actually wrapping the bumper, the reason you came here. This will apply for pretty much any vehicle. I had yet to see a video on YouTube of a guy wrapping the front bumper of one of these newer ones. So I wanted to put it out there for you guys. Tools you'll need. First off, the vinyl. I went with a pretty stupidly large sheet. It was like a 25 feet long by five feet in width. And that was way too, I probably could have had four bumpers with that thing to be honest. So figure about a quarter of that is about what you'll need. And uh, I went with some quality stuff. It's called 3M's 1080 vinyl. That's a quality vinyl to use for like uh, automotive is commonly what it's used for. I believe that's its intended purpose. And second off, a heat gun. Do not, I had to go and buy this. Do not try and uh, do it without a heat gun because using that gun, it makes it like a completely different material to work with. As soon as you start heating it up, it's like just conforms around anything you'll need it to. But there's a delicate balance. I found out that I can't heat it too long and I ripped it in one spot. Other than that though, it's pretty easy to work with. I'll show you guys what I've started with here. Obviously this is where the plastic piece goes, that one, so it would be like pretty much right here. We'll never see anything past like right there. So what this looks like, I really there can be as many wrinkles as I want there. It doesn't matter, it'll be covered up. Parking sensor went right there. Fog light went right there. And overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Like again, down here this will all be covered. Nothing to worry about there. But this is what I was concerned about right here. I thought it was gonna be wrinkle city going the whole way through here. Pulling it and all that stuff and just like pull up and down and up and down and heating it and all that came out pretty good. I'm gonna show you guys on that side how exactly I'm doing it. To get to this point to get you up to speed, basically what I did for this, I had one person holding it right here, then I had another person right here pulling it tight, the sheet on both ends. Can't do it with like one hand, but you can picture me grabbing two corners, them grabbing two corners, and then one person runs to the middle, pulls off the underlying protection that keeps the adhesive from touching anything. So basically peel that off. And then you're gonna wanna both pull away from each other and then drop it down. And then just kinda like tuck it down and in, like over here. You can kinda picture me holding this like right here and then pulling it down and in. And you at least get like the most of it right there. But you're gonna end up peeling it up anyways to work all your bubbles out. The reason I'm doing this is I'm only gonna have this set up for like three weeks. And the main, main reason is I'm going to be going to Myrtle Beach from Pennsylvania. So it's a pretty long road trip. So if there's any guys in Myrtle Beach, are going to be there soon. So if you want to check out the truck at all. Anyways, I didn't want to drive down there with a chrome front bumper. It absolutely just drove me insane. I wanted something that was going to be clean on the whole front end. I wanted to run a white front bumper. I didn't want to have to pay for the cost of getting it painted to be able to drive it for three or four weeks. I figured, hey, 
it's a good experiment if I don't really like it or it doesn't come out that great. A, I only spent less than the gun was like 20 bucks. And let's say if you actually use the right amount of vinyl, $50 in vinyl, so $70, really not that bad for just completely whiting it out. Is it gonna be a perfect match? No, that's the thing about vinyl. This white is just a generic universal white. That truck is Summit white. So it's gonna be slightly off to a degree. This is gonna be a little brighter of a white, a little duller of a white on the Chevy. For those of you that have watched the video on all the parts I have for the truck, You'll see that I have Bodyguard AL2 Series bumpers, front and rear, white and red, couple accents on there. I'll quit talking, let's get to the point you care about and actually wrap this thing. So the magic with this is pretty much, you, you pull it up so that you're only touching where you've already done, like up into here, and give it a little bit of heat. But don't sit, don't just sit there like this for too long because then it'll just heat up the vinyl too much and you'll tear it, but anyways. Give it a little bit of heat. And then work your way, what I found best, work your way from the back and down. If you just throw it over, you're gonna have air bubbles everywhere. So keep it up, work your way down and in. All that air comes to the bottom. And if you do screw it up like this right here, and you're like, oh shoot, we have an air bubble, pull it up a little bit till that air can escape. And then grab it and work your way down with it. Another example is right here. I, I didn't push on that far enough, so I'm gonna have to go back up, wait till it catches that air pocket. There it did, and then run it down. All right guys, I finally got the guts back in the thing. All these bolts here kind of mounted it in place. And then he had all these tiny little 10 millimeters along the bottom to hold this bottom valence in place. This pops in place with some clips to help it stay in there. And the final product, I'm actually uh, pretty happy with. That is all finished, set and done. Can't really complain about that for, like I said, three weeks temporary setup. The only thing I screwed up on was this right here. I expected this piece to come to the edge. I didn't remember that it came in a little bit. So as you can see some creases down into there. From a distance, you'll never see it. Like two inches away, you'll see it right in there. But overall, like I said, really happy. Top came out good and it'll be on the truck pretty soon. So what would I do for next time? Definitely invest in a squeegee. I used my hands and I got little blisters everywhere. You'd save a lot of time with the squeegee just because you'd be able to get a larger surface area rather than just a little finger one by one. So overall, not a bad job. Like I said, temporary setup, three weeks. Which brings me to my next point, which is July 3rd. That's the day that it is going into the shop. So for everyone asking, that's finally when it's gonna happen. And then from there, it'll be three weeks to get it all done between painting everything, powder coating everything, and getting it out of the shop, three weeks said and done. So guys, overall on this project, I would say try it if you're even thinking about it. But first thing I would do is try it on something that you're not really gonna care about. Give it like a little practice run. Just five minutes of working with the material gives you a lot better understanding of how well you can squeegee it, how much you can heat it, how much you can pull it, just kind of stuff like that without ripping it, luckily. Where I ripped mine, you can't really see it right up in here. But I heated it way too much and pulled it. It was the first spot I did, so that was definitely a screw up there. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see the bumper go on, but 
Right now we're working on stuff underneath the engine, up pipes, down pipe, and a manifold. And to do that, we're kind of climbing up and over the engine here. So I don't really want to put the new bumper on there, get it all scraped up. On a side note though, we have a second project we're working on and it's kind of going to be on the channel later on. We're going to be doing an exhaust on it. Definitely MBRP. It's all we're pretty much run around here. And this is the truck we'll be working on. It is a 2006 LBZ. So far, pretty much just painted plastics, uh, tinted tail lights, wheels, tires, tint, all the good stuff to keep it nice and clean. Like I said, the exhaust on that. Show you guys start to finish how that's done. Literally, the kits are identical from 01 to 07 for GM vehicles. So pretty much a universal uh, how-to video. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.